in to our <laughs> foible skills workshop. Um, this is the first in our free workshop series for navigating your career transition. Um, and so I'm Lori Slater. I'm the Director of Accessibility and Disability Services. And my name is Sierra Chitwood. Um, so I'm a career advisor in career planning and development. And uh, so here we go. Let's um, take a look. We're going to go kind of back and forth as we work through um, today. And we encourage you to ask questions and uh, give your feedback. We're going to ask you for um, kind of your thoughts along the way. And we hope this will be interactive. So why are we talking about skill building? So generally for pretty much any job in any kind of career field, um, you're going to need obviously some of those uh, skills for working with people, working in teams, being able to kind of uh, manage your own projects, all of that kind of stuff. Um, so when we talk about what are the skills that most employers need, we actually have some data on like what are the top things you should be saying about yourself when you're in interviews, when you're on your, talking about yourself on your resume. Um, we wanted to kind of go over that today because that can help with any kind of future job search process. Um, and so also these topics are, are um, as we cover the, the workshop, like these are the things that um, employers are telling us, that students are telling us that they're struggling with, that they're worried about as they're going into thinking about what job they're um, going to look for, how it's going to work as far as things that they are doing here in college, things that they feel that they're good at, the things that they feel like they're not as good at, how are they you know, kind of going to get over that, how are, how are they going to build those skills up so that they're ready. Um, things that we hear from employers that, you know, if you think about whatever major you're in and you're in those job interviews and there's other newly graduated in the same area, right? What is your major? Uh, political science. Political science. So you think about you're in that job interview with other people in political science, whatever area you're thinking about going into, um, and they just graduated with the same degree, like how are you going to set yourself above and, and get that job above them, right? So the things that the employers are looking for and how we can make you shine and look across it. Perfect. So the skills we're going to go over in the workshop. Um, so there is something called NACE, uh, National Association of Colleges and Employers. Um, so that is an organization that basically tries to merge together information from um, different employers. What are they looking for? What are they wanting in their employees? Um, it also works with college career advisors to say, okay, how can we help students basically prepare for the job search process and for you know life as a full-time employee after college? Um, so NACE uh, routinely every few years will basically survey employers and say, hey, what are the most important skills that you want to see from people who are applying for jobs? There are eight um, that we're going to go over that are the current like biggest NACE career competencies. Career and self-development, communication, critical thinking, and then equity and inclusion are the first four. Second four are leadership, professionalism, teamwork, and technology. So we're going to dive into a little bit of like what those all mean and how you can show those skills. So on this slide, we're going to talk about career and self-development. So the shorter kind of definition of this would be proactively developing oneself and one's career. So basically just like kind of like that go-getter personality, essentially, um, being the one who kind of initiates um, you know, maybe I want some more trainings or initiates, hey, I have goals for myself and where I want to progress in this career and I want to share those with you. Um, some of the example behaviors for this is being aware of your own strengths and areas for development. Pretty much any interview process, they will ask you what, what are some of your strengths, what's your greatest weakness, and how are you trying to improve that? That's going to be something you definitely need to know how to talk about. Um, advocating for yourself and others, um, embracing any kind of professional development opportunities that come along. Um, and then just kind of voluntarily participating in bettering yourself and your career skills. Okay, so in that career and self-development, let's think about what you're doing at Drury to build those skills. 
right? What are some of your challenges and what are you doing now to overcome them? So let's take that first part. What are you doing at Drury to build up those skills? So what do you think other students might be doing? So uh, the first part is awareness of your own strengths and areas for development. So what are you doing at Drury for awareness of your own strengths and areas for development? Any thoughts? Yes. I wanted to improve my English more, so that's why I like yeah. yeah, so for exchange students or students where English is not their first language, attending anything that gets them involved, right, and, and helps with building building their English. I think that's an excellent, um, excellent goal. Yeah, thanks. Uh, sometimes, or like I recently realized that sometimes I struggle with uh, being open to what other people have to say when, like, when a part of like a, a group or something mm -hmm. similar like that. And so I've looked at like doing like FGA things like that, that where I can really work on collaborating and like working with other people. Yeah, that's great. Participating in student government, getting a, and being able to collaborate with other students. I think that is an excellent point. Um, some other things to think about. Um, have you participated in Focus Two? That's part of uh, career planning and development where you can go in and take the assessment and um, it will kind of give you, Brandon can give you a little more information or Sierra can give you more information on that, but it's an assessment that is available to all students at Drury where you can go in and it tells you what your strengths are, what areas you might be really good at employment wise. Brandon, you want to say anything about that? Uh, the focus too, it actually has a section in there um, that does go over these career conferences. I don't know. You're going to go over this, but it does give you recommendations on how you can improve in each one of these areas as well. So, all right, we also have a strengths finder um, assessment, so that specifically will tell you like your top five strengths that in the language that employers will probably be pretty used to. Um, so, we have different assessments for that too. Yeah, yeah, um, so that is a resource that's on our website, and I can show you individually like later on how to access it. That is free to all Drury students. Um, you really just would go to the link, use the access code, which is Panthers, so pretty easy to get in. Um, and then you can go through lots of different types of assessments. Um, so if you want to follow up afterwards, I can show you kind of how to use that. And that's available for anyone who wants to check that out. So, yeah. um, other ways um, to be aware of your own strengths and areas for development, meeting with your faculty members. They are great at, you know, you're great to get to know your faculty members, right? So meeting with them, they can help you through kind of areas um, that that may need more development, areas that you're really good at. They know your area as far as what it's going to look like to go out and get a job. So they're um, a great resource for being able to help you through that. Um, you had mentioned clubs and organizations, so that's um, great areas as well. So professionally advocate for one, oneself and others was another area. So what here at Drury, um, can you do profess to professionally advocate for yourself and others? What are some things you're doing at Drury? Professionally advocate for self and others. I, I'll just jump in and give an example that, I mean, for us, for staff, it's a little bit different, but this is something that students participate in as well. Um, this workshop was because it was a collaboration between Lori and I. We have some workshops that we're doing because students have asked us, hey, I don't really know how to answer these types of questions. These are, these are things I feel like I'm not getting from my faculty and staff at Drury or skills I'm not getting. And so we were like, okay, let's build some workshops around that. Right? So taking something that, you know, making a new event, making a new right. presentation. Coming in and participating in workshops, that's a great, great way to advocate for yourself. So again, getting involved in clubs, getting involved in organizations. What about community involvement? Are you doing any community involvement, either as part of a class or um, anything like that. That's a good way to, to be advocating for, for others or things that you believe in, right? Um, seek and embrace development opportunities was another part of that. Uh, so similar to what Sierra was saying, right? You're recognizing something that, that you need to develop more. Um, so attending workshops and recognizing that. Um, internships. Anybody thinking about internships? Yes. Are you doing something now? Uh, yes, I have an internship with a state representative. Uh, awesome. I work with him on his campaign to take advantage of that. Okay, so that is making a great connection.
action is getting into the skills related to what you're going to do. Um, so uh, development opportunities, um, mock interview um, training, that's something that's available through career planning and development. So all of that is part of development. Also, they offer resume reviews. So if you have your resume, you need someone to, to look it over, give you some guidance on that. That's all available. It's all part of that um, career and self-development piece. Um, the last part of that would voluntarily participate in further education, training, or other events to support your career. So again, kind of all those, those pieces that we've talked about kind of cross over into that too. These workshops, uh, career fairs, they just had a huge career fair yesterday. Um, those are offered. That one happens every year, but there's some other ones too, correct? Yeah, we'll have uh, different opportunities like employers that come on campus to get folks in the FSC. Yeah, so those are just other opportunities that you have to participate. Um, and uh, and there's there's different speakers that they have on campus, right? So if you have an opportunity to participate in any of those guest speakers, um, the Meteor series is happening this spring, um, but there's also other opportunities. So just more development, more exposure that you have for yourself all relates to just career and self-development. I, I would add, like, if depending on your major, there's a lot of student professional groups, like uh, organizations that uh, help be a part of, like some are like nationally known depending on what your area is. And getting involved with those um, kind of helps you know what's uh, new in your areas. Um, so like, you know, especially if you're in like technology, uh, being up to date on the new stuff, a lot of those professional groups have like different resources. So whenever you go to apply, different jobs, um, having that organization or whatever those groups that you associate with uh, definitely help you. Perfect. All right. So communication. Um, and this has a lot of them, so I don't have to go through every piece of this because that's like a very large, a lot of stuff is encompassed in that. Um, but basically clearly and effectively um, exchanging information, ideas, um, facts and perspectives with people in and outside of your business. Right? Your organization. Um, so understanding the importance of effective verbal and written communication. Um, there's really not any job where you're, there's hardly any jobs where you're not going to be emailing constantly <laughs> with other people. Uh, so you need to be able to explain yourself well <laughs> in that sense. Um, and most jobs also will have some aspect of presenting that you have to do, um, presenting your ideas, leading a meeting, all of that. Um, and playing active listening. So essentially, thinking about what the person is saying rather than what you're going to respond with in a few seconds. Um, actually actively listening. Persuasion, influencing skills, um, framing communication with respect to diversity of different learning styles, communication abilities, cultural differences, right? Um, and also being able to, uh, this basically boils down this last point to asking questions rather than feeling really nervous about that process or about the conflict process. You should be able to ask your boss, hey, I don't understand this. I don't feel very strong in this area. Can you help me out? Sorry. Okay. So same question. It didn't. It changed here. It didn't change up there. Oh. 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 We're having a delay. Internet. So luckily, Ooh. this one is recording separately. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so delay is not happening on here. <laughs> well, we wait for that to catch up. If it does. Uh, let's talk about what you're doing at Drury to build those skills. Uh, what are some of your challenges and what are you doing to overcome them? So, uh, so communication. Um, understand the importance of effective verbal and written communication, active listening. Um, framing communication with respect to diversity and learning styles, all of those things that Sierra talked about. So what are some things that are happening here at Drury that you're doing? now to work on those. Go ahead. Uh, well, I mean, for example, uh, you know, for anybody that has a uh, job on campus, for instance, they have to keep in constant email communication mm -hmm. with either like their higher ups or anybody that's, you know, yeah. like ahead of them, that kind of thing, like their yeah. head supervisor, if you will. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's something that I have to do all the time, regardless yeah. of where I'm working. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And that, that's a different kind of communication than you use with friends or classmates or whatever, right? Like 
there's a certain level of professionalism that you're learning with them. Yes. I would say one thing that you can do is like practice with professors or if you're on campus for I think mm -hmm. differences between text communication and email communication, professionalism there. Um, a lot of times, you know, look at the professional emails <laughs> that, that your faculty uh, or advisors use mm -hmm. and try to emulate that. Working in an international office. Mm -hmm. Okay. So every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. absolutely. So those emails that you're doing in an international office, who are you communicating with? The students all over the world that might come to Drury. And so that looks very different than a text you're sending to a friend, right? Um, and so that's giving you a lot of practice on those professional communication skills. Yeah. Does anyone have to do presentations a lot or lead meetings or anything? Yeah, for sure. If you haven't yet, probably will encounter some classes that have some presentations or anything. Yeah. What about the thought on um, listening to to others, like the active listening? What's happening here? It's allowing you to work on that. I really feel like uh, within uh, a lot of classes, a lot of them, yeah. you know, uh, one great thing that's awesome about Drury is the small class size. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. For instance, you know, we are often broken into groups all the time, uh, you know, for just like working on like small group projects or things such as that. And oftentimes, you know, you have to be able to be an active listener in order to understand what your classmate is trying to say mm -hmm. and be able to like work well with them. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great point. Um, and and that is the reason we do so much of that as faculty is exactly for that reason, right? Um, we're not doing huge lecture halls where you're just sitting in there taking in information because we're not able to build that whole communication piece with that model. Mm -hmm. um, what about the diversity piece? It talked about um, uh, framing communication with respect to diversity, difference, um, individual differences. Think about a, you know, any workplace you're going to go into, you're going to be interacting with all kinds of people, right? Just like we do here at Drury. So, how do we prepare you for that? What are you doing now? Yeah. Great example. Great example. The dorms are a mix of everybody, and you get to see how all different cultures live. I think that's a great example. I believe we also have lots of uh, fantastic student-led uh, groups and clubs mm -hmm. as well. Like when you look at Buick or anything like that, you know, for lots sure. of different uh, clubs and like opportunities for you to join and to meet different people that come from different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, and really just expand your diversity. Yeah, yeah. So a club like Buick, but they welcome in everybody, right? You don't just have to identify as whatever that that group is, but they welcome in everybody. Um, and so those are things that you can speak to when you go out into the workforce, right? And you can get involved in, in community things that you're passionate about. It doesn't have to end here. Um, uh, you know, and Sierra talked about like asking the questions. We, um, my husband and I own a business um, in construction, and my husband talks all the time when he hires somebody new. You know, when you're dealing in construction, it's like somebody makes a mistake, mistakes happen, that's fine. But if it was because you didn't ask the question, you didn't know what, what you were doing, and you didn't just bother to ask the question. That's when it gets frustrating, mistakes get made, and it gets expensive. So he he <laughs> struggles with that all the time. And so every time he hires somebody new, he goes, "If you don't understand what I asked you to do, just ask the question. I will explain it to you again." So that was a really important point. Sure. Hey, we're back. Oh, are we? Right. Yeah. Okay. I was just gonna keep repeating. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So critical thinking. 
Um, so the, this is a big part of college, right? I'm sure that your professors have been like in the syllabus. Critical thinking skills, that's what we're working on, right? Um, ident being able to identify and respond to needs based on an understanding of situational context, um, logical analysis of relevant information. So basically being able to problem solve and make decisions, right? Um, being able also to seek out information that will help you problem solve rather than just going off the top of your head and kind of going with <laughs> what uh, you first think of when solving a problem. Um, being able to gather and analyze information from different sources um, and different individuals. This kind of goes back into listening to, right? Because if you talk to a lot of different individuals in the organization, there's probably going to be different perspectives on a current problem that you have. Um, what's the biggest thing that's bothering this department? Well, what's the biggest issue this department's facing, right? Um, and then correctly anticipating needs and prioritizing action steps. Um, so being able to say like, okay, what's the greatest need that my organization has right now or my department has, um, what really needs to be kind of first on the list. Yeah. Okay, so what's happening in Drury? What are you doing now? So what are some things that you do now to make decisions and solve problems? kind of like a cop-out answer, but I really do feel like our classes do a fantastic job of that. You know, the professors are very, you know, uh, involved with the class. It's not them just like speaking to you. It's them, you know, again, had like giving you problems, forcing you to find solutions, you know, working together to critically analyze and like find the right reasonable answer. Right, right. You know, I, I, I don't, I think that is a great answer. And I think that um, it translates well into the workforce because um, even student workers that I have and an intern that I have, um, you know, I've had ones that that have done this really well, and others that haven't developed it as well. Um, and if if an individual is able to, if I say, you know, I just here's what I'm trying to get to, and I really don't know the path, but if you can figure it out, um, and ones that can solve that problem, I am just like, you are a rock star. <laughs> Thank you. You've just taken an enormous amount off my shoulders. Mm -hmm. um, that's what employers want. And the ones that are like, well, can you just tell me how to do it and get there? I'm like, well, I might as well just do it myself, you know? Um, so this is huge. And, and I think that there's a lot of things in the classroom that we do. And students, um, uh, you know, we teach classes, we all teach classes. Um, and, and sometimes students don't understand why we're trying to get them to do that. Like, can you just tell me how many pages you want and how many resources I need and I'll go do it. And it's like, nope, that's not what we're trying to do, right? We're trying to get you to do this. Um, and so, uh, so thanks for bringing that up. That's a, that's a really good point. Anything else? Any other thoughts? Any of you doing capstones or senior seminars? Those kind of the big project based pieces have that coming up in your future. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone get to attend Fusion Day last year? May or may not have. So Fusion Day is a great example of Did you, projects. Oh, first year. First year. Okay. Yeah. Well, you'll have it coming up here in a couple months. And this um, is why. Yeah. So that's all about like you get to design whatever it is that you want, and this is this is it. You create a problem that you're going to find a solution to, and that's that's what this critical thinking piece is all about. I think in the professional world, it's, uh, you're going to encounter supervisors that are busy. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times it's, yes, you get that task and you kind of mentioned to myself, I had to go through, um, because yeah. everybody's got kind of a role. So the more that you can figure out and do on your own, and it doesn't necessarily mean there's a right answer on a lot of this stuff. It's what path did you take to come up with something that really works and is successful. Yeah. So you, you don't think of it in terms of necessarily as right and wrong, but like, you know, how do we get to something that's agreeable? Um, and sometimes there's multiple paths. And, yeah. and if you're sitting around the table trying to figure out how you're getting to that end point, this critical thinking piece comes in and you're all kind of throwing out ideas. But if there's one person sitting around, just, just tell me what to do when you figure it out. Like that's, that's not really what the employers are looking for. Yeah. 
equity and inclusion. So demonstrating an awareness, um, demonstrating the awareness, attitude, knowledge, and skills required to equitably engage and include people from different local and global cultures. Okay. Um, so, you know, we talked about this on the last slide a little bit, but, you know, um, getting feedback from multiple different perspectives, um, especially different cultural perspectives, um, so that you can make inclusive and equity-minded decisions. Um, actively contribute to inclusive and equitable practices, um, recognizing what those are, um, recognizing what habits you may have, and like, okay, is that kind of in line with what makes everyone feel included? Um, and then identify resources and eliminate barriers resulting from individual and systemic racism, inequities, and biases. We talked about this a little bit in relation to communication, um, but but what else? Just about in general, the way we interact with people, um, the way we conduct ourselves. What are we doing now so that we can be good humans out in the world? Any thoughts? Well, one big thing that one of my classes uh, had me do uh, was we took the Harvard bias. Yes, uh, isn't that amazing? It, it was a very interesting uh, thing to just go through and kind of like uh, learn more about yourself and just like your implicit biases or biases that you may mm -hmm. not have realized that you had. Which one did you take? Uh, we took, I think it was just like the ethnicity, like okay. just like general like ethnicity. There's different, mm -hmm. different ones. That you can right, use. and then like throughout the year, we're going to like keep going back to it and take like different like test awesome. each time so that's, that's one wonderful. thing that we do to you know mm -hmm. kind of try and uh just see and understand and realize what you know bias people may have towards other people or other right. things or things mm -hmm. like that and try and you know overcome them yeah so sure. that goes to that um uh seeing what challenges we may have mm -hmm. and even just recognizing that i do have biases mm -hmm. and i and i'm going to work to do better that's mm -hmm. that's huge right any other thoughts? One thing I can throw in there to kind of help the yeah. conversation too. Um, so this is something that I do, like in my brain, this is something I do to advocate for myself, but I love it when other people realize this. Um, so if I'm in like a very large presentation, I'm hard of hearing this year, doesn't really do anything. Um, but if I'm in a presentation, sometimes somebody will present it to a very large room and they'll say, mm, I don't really want to use the mic. I don't like holding microphones. And then they'll just talk very quietly in front of the room, right? <laughs> Now, I obviously, when I can and when I'm in a position to be like, hey, can you not? Can you, can you use a microphone so I can hear and like, <laughs> can we make it more inclusive for everyone? Um, that's great, but I, I really appreciate it when that's kind of beforehand, whoever's planning the event says, hey, this is why you need to be using this, right? Like, there are people in the audience, this is a big space, we might need this. Somebody else just kind of jumping in and saying like, hey, Preemptively, so nobody has to awkwardly raise their hand and be like, actually, no, could we go back and use the microphone? Nobody wants to be that person. It's super awkward. I do it, but it's awkward. If somebody else just says, no, we're going to go ahead and use the microphone for all our large events, that's a lot better preemptively to make everyone feel included rather than making you feel like, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a soft conversation for me. <laughs> right, right. Um, so we had talked earlier about um, some of our, our um, groups on campus, getting involved in those. Uh, if you've been to some of the, like Buick and um, uh, some of our other groups on campus, you hear some of the challenges that they're talking about here on, on campus and the things that they're concerned about. Many of the things that they talk about on campus are the same things that workplaces are talking about, mm -hmm. same things that community is talking about. So the more you're involved on campus and getting involved in those things, the more you can talk about those when you get out in into the to the work world um, and can contribute to some of those some of those pieces. So leadership. This one is probably not surprising. This is something that I mean, even if you're not directly in a super supervisor position for a job, um, most workplaces would kind of want you to have some amount of leadership skills if you're going to be working with people, working in teams. Um, just kind of being able to lead and take charge. Um, definition wise, it's recognizing um, and capitalizing on personal and team strengths to achieve organizational goals. So not necessarily like my way or the highway, I know what we're doing, but recognizing, okay, I'm really good at this piece. Um, my coworker is really good at um, maybe working with community partners that we have, and they're really great at those like social skills, whereas I'm really good at the organizational side, and how do we work together to use all those things? Um, inspiring 
persuading and motivating yourself and others under a shared vision. Um, I like the word inspire, right? Um, so being able to, I mean, part of it too, when we describe kind of what good leaders look like is just having an excitement for what you're doing, um, being like visibly enthusiastic about whatever the project is. Um, so that inspires others to also be more interested as well. Serving as a role model um, and approaching tasks with confidence and a positive attitude, plan, initiate, manage, complete, and evaluate um, projects. All right, so what does that look like now that we can translate out to later? What are some of our challenges? Yeah, so yeah. are you, so as far as presenting in front of groups, um, are you in any classes where you uh, are being asked to do that, or that's an expectation at least by the end of the semester, or you're going to have to present a project or something like that? Uh, I have this presentation coming up this week. Yes. Mm -hmm. In one of the fusion class. Okay, for sure. Yeah, so how do you feel about having to um, present your fusion project? I think it's pretty scary mm -hmm. because I'm not very comfortable speaking to mm -hmm. Just like I have to process a little bit. Sure, okay. sure. So, so you're nervous about it because of your English, but um, I hear from students all the time about how nervous they are about presenting in front of their class. So it's not just you because of your English. It is, um, I would say, a large portion of the student population in general is nervous about presenting in front of the class, uh, regardless of how good their English is. <laughs> so not just you. Um, but that's true. But as Sierra mentioned earlier, um, that is a very common thing within employment almost across the board, um, whether it's uh, presenting to your to your team. Um, many uh, employers have a train the trainer model mm -hmm. in just about any kind of work where they are sending one person out to get trained on whatever this new thing is, whether it's a technology, whether it's uh, a new way of doing whatever it is, uh, and that person comes back and trains the group there's so many reasons why people have to get comfortable with getting up and sharing information, whether it's informally or in a setting like this. Um, and it can be scary and it can be difficult, but that's just one of those things that um, we have to learn to at least get somewhat comfortable with. But that's a that's a great point. Any other I, I say ideas? Employers are, <clears throat> once you get in with a company, especially if you're there for a while, they're investing time and effort on you to hopefully have you take the reins and become a leader within their organization. So sometimes people are like, well, I don't know if I'll become a leader, but once you get more experience in your field and your knowledge base and you become an expert kind of in those areas, that I think it becomes more comfortable for you to present and things because you're, you do have more passion and you have more comfort comfortable knowledge uh, base of what you're you're actually doing so. and part of this can be to can be to determining to you what good leaders look like by observing others right um, just kind of noticing what traits make you feel better when you're working in a team with someone who's leading um, what traits are like really don't like it if somebody leading a team does this maybe I'm not going to follow that <laughs> right yeah so they also talked about a role model um, being a good role model is showing good leadership, and uh, so that can look a lot of different ways. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're the supervisor, it doesn't necessarily mean you're in charge, but just being a good role model in general. So um, that's something else to think about as well. So professionalism. Oops, we're not going. That's all right. That's okay. <laughs> Um, if anyone needs like visually, if you would be more comfortable reading, we can you can read off one of our slides, um, and hopefully that will uh, change in just a second. For now, I'm going to oh, start. Um, so knowing work environments differ greatly, um, understanding and demonstrating effective work habits, 
um, and equity in the interest of the larger community and workplace. This kind of boils down to a few different things. Um, acting with integrity, right? Um, I mean, the obvious is not lying to your employer and saying <laughs> that it actually works when you know they're not going to be there and they're like actually home, right? You know, so little things. Um, maintaining positive positive personal brand in alignment with the organization's um, personal personal career values. Demonstrating dependability, so being consistent. Um, finishing projects when you said you would. Being able to follow up with things that you committed to. Um, prioritizing and completing and accomplishing um, tasks to accomplish university or organizational goals. And showing a high level of dedication towards doing a good job. Um, this kind of goes into as well just the ways that we, you know, some organizations might have professional dress or what their expectations are for how you dress at work. Um, the kind of ways that you communicate. For instance, one example is in a university setting. Um, I probably wouldn't worry about this if I worked in a different kind of business, but I always check if somebody has a doctor or not. Because for a lot of people, that's going to change the way that I address them, right? Um, if I don't know this person very well and I don't know how they like to be addressed, I'm going to look and see, okay, is it Dr. Slater, right? Okay, it is Dr. Slater until, you know, Lord told me otherwise, right? Um, versus, you know, that's that's one thing in my particular organization that's a level of professionalism you got to be aware of. So, yeah. Okay, so here at Drury, um, how do you work on your professional skills? Right, you're at college, you're having some fun, it's a little more relaxed, but how do you work on your professional skills to get ready for college, for a career? How do we prepare you and how do you get ready? Yeah? Uh, well, I would say this is a very good, you know, okay. uh, just an example of that, yeah. you know, working right. professionals are coming here, learning how to balance your personal and professional image, you know, working on how to, you know, structure yourself, how to Act in workplace, all like these workshops that you know Jury yeah. hosts for everybody. It's a great mm -hmm. way to work on that to see some of your challenges. Absolutely. Good. What else? Do you go to class on time? Yeah? Pretty challenging. <laughs> it's going to be challenging, but you gotta show up to class on time because you're gonna have to show up to work on time. What else? But even if you are late, you're not just like banging the door open and like walking in like nothing's wrong, you would apologize, right? Like even if there are times, <laughs> well, yeah. that's a little late. <laughs> so this is one area and um, many times when you get ready to go apply for a job, they're gonna ask for references. Yes. So for your first job um, straight out of college, who are you gonna ask to give you a reference? Professors. Professors. If you don't show up for their classes, you don't reply to their emails. And you don't answer your emails that they send you, and you don't turn in your work. How are they going to give you a professional reference? It's going to be pretty difficult. But if you're showing up for class, you're turning in their work, you're doing, you're meeting with, you're doing all the things that a great student does. It's going to be pretty easy to give you that good professional reference, right? So you're building those skills. They're paying attention to that, and they're able to talk to that when you need it. Mm -hmm. So, um, along with leadership, I think this is probably one that most students would name as like, this is probably something that employers care about a lot, right? Um, teamwork. So, being able to work well with others, right? Um, so, being able to build and maintain collaborative relationships to work effectively towards common goals um, while appreciating diverse viewpoints and shared responsibilities. Being able to listen carefully to others, that active listening, um, asking appropriate questions. Effectively, effectively managing conflict, um, interacting with uh, respect to diverse personalities, um, employing personal strengths, knowledge, and talents to complement those of others. So we kind of mentioned that already, like as leadership, being able to tell what you're good at and what other people can bring to the table as well. Collaborating with others, um, building strong, positive working relationships with your supervisor and team members slash coworkers. Teamwork. How are we building teamwork? Mm -hmm. In my current fusion class, I have to be in a different team every week because I am experiment. Okay. So, so being on different teams every week in your fuse class, what kind of experiments are you doing? 
classes, we um, expect students to work in groups. And I know as a professor um, in teaching classes, when I say, okay, we're going to work in groups, what do you think the uh, response I get from students is? Mm -hmm. uh, ah, <laughs> do we have to work in groups? Yes. And you have to work in groups because of this. <laughs> Employers are going to expect you to be able to work on a team. Very few of you are going to have a job where you don't interact with anyone. And if you know, <laughs> if you are not able to do that reasonably, it's going to be a problem. And if you have to go to your employer and say they're not doing their fair share, they won't do their part, they don't like me, all these things that we hear from students, you're not going to do that to an employer. And if you do, it's going to be a problem. Not consistently, at least. Maybe <laughs> once or twice, they're like, okay, maybe that person's the problem. Right. But after a while. But after that, they're, they're going <laughs> to have issues, right? And so we work on that in the classroom. So uh, teamwork uh, is, is big. And that's why we do this in the classroom. Mm -hmm. and that's where, why we're able to be mandatory. So keep that in mind. The next time your professor says, it's time to work in groups, you're going to say, yes, let's do it. That's great. <laughs> Awesome. So um, the last one, actually, of the eight that we're talking about um, is technology. So understanding, uh, being able to understand and leverage technologies ethically to enhance efficiencies, complete tasks, and accomplish goals. And looks different for different types of jobs you might be doing. Um, certainly, you're using technology for your classes while you're a jury, right? Um, so being able to navigate change and be open to learning new technologies um, whenever your whole organization implements a new system riding along with that rather than making a big fuss because it's going to happen anyways, whether you like it or not. Um, using technology to improve efficiency and productivity of your work and identifying appropriate technology for completing specific tasks. Um, so that's that kind of, again, back to productivity. So what technology are we using? Oh, on the finger. Uh, what technology are we using here at Drury? You know what it says by the time, so <laughs> that's fine. What technology are we using? Canvas. Canvas? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What else? Besides your phone. Besides social media. What are we using? PowerPoint? How many? PowerPoint. Yeah, do you feel like you're like really great at PowerPoint? I am. Except when it does this? Yeah. yeah. No? <laughs> yes? Not yet. Yes? What else? What? The coffee machine, all of that, okay? Yeah, yeah, those coffee machines yeah. can be complicated sometimes, I'm telling you. I thought it shake a couple of them. Uh, Excel is something I had no previous yeah. knowledge Excel. of. Excel, it can do amazing you. things if you know how to yep. do it. Yeah. That's been quite a challenge. There's, okay. There is hundreds of different online courses you can take to learn Excel. Mm -hmm. Just a class on how to use Excel. Yeah. What Which else? is a useful training. <laughs> my jury. We have our own For complicated sure. my jury. Um, yeah. Online meetings in like Zoom or Google Oh my goodness. Virtual meetings. Since yeah. COVID happened, the online meetings stuff, right? Mm -hmm. We're all professionals with that now. Yeah. When's the last time you learned a new application of some sort? Just this weekend I learned how to remove the background of a picture. Oh yeah. So that I can put it on my poster. It took me for a while. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what did you use for that? Like Canva or 3D Painter. 3D Painter? Okay. Oh nice. <laughs> okay. What up? When's the last time you learned something new? Yeah. Oh, well, shoot. Yeah. Just today I learned how to use handshake. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Handshake. Yeah. 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 Shout out to handshake. <laughs> okay. When's the last time you learned something new? Huh? My jury, my jury. In here? For sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so a lot of times we think of, you know, our, our younger students coming in, our high school students, like they should know all this technology, like the phone. That, that's like it, maybe words. Um, so yeah, embrace technology, embrace learning new things with technology because you're going to need it. Like employers are going to know what, what you're able to learn and how tech savvy you are um, and willingness to learn new things. So 
Yeah, and use your resources because I have a lot of students. I mean, even pretty basic in terms of the steps it takes to get there, but there's some formatting things on resumes that students oftentimes will come to me and be like, I know it looks really simple on paper, but I have no idea how to do this in Word or Google Docs. I don't know how I'm I supposed move to. that indent over? Right, how do I get how do that I, rulers? How do I, how do do I align this column over here? You can do like little nice clean lines in between all your skills listed, and it's two buttons you press, but you know, if you don't know that already, hard to format that on your own, right? So right. use your resources. Yeah. I uh, was teaching a class in the fall and they had a, their ending project, they had three options, right? They could do, um, they could do a podcast, they could do a, a, like a voiceover PowerPoint into a, make it into a video, or they could like go out and like video, like interview people. <laughs> and they were all like, what? <laughs> what? I don't understand. Um, it, because the technology piece, piece of it, that was like a little bit, you know, going out in video, they were okay with that, right? That's on the phone. They can do that. And the voiceover PowerPoint thing, they're like, huh? I, I don't know how to do that. Um, I mean, we had to, like, I had to post a video for them, a how-to video on how to do this. Um, a podcast, mm, not so much. Um, so yeah, you have to you have to branch out on your technology and be ready for some new skills. There. And realizing that that's often the other duties as a sign on your job description. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. so much often technology because you know Laura and I are doing this workshop. Kind of screen mirroring, which is you know going us a little trouble. We also have to be recording it on here for people who are not here right now. Um, we also have to be running the Instagram where we post about it, right? Like that's that's not. When, you, when the job description says like doing workshops, it doesn't say all of those other parts, right? All right. So this is just a, um, the, the next couple of workshops. And mm -hmm. I put some flyers out there so you have the dates there in front of you too. We'll be right back here. Come and join us. Yeah. So Any last minute questions though that you have? The next two will cover a little bit different topics, mm -hmm. but we'll kind of keep going along the same um, basic about transitioning into career, mm -hmm. but we hope you'll join us. But any uh, last questions we can answer, concerns? I got one final thought reminder, I guess. Mm -hmm. if, if you do get a chance to get into Focus 2, um, a lot of the things that were discussed today, and I mentioned this kind of at the beginning, where yeah. it gives ideas of how to improve these uh, competencies, mm -hmm. um, there's list in there. Kind of yeah. help us give you ideas. So if you go on the jury website, go to career planning, if you go on the search and just put in um, career, the options will come up. So you go to the mm -hmm. career planning and development page, and you can get all the information on there, and it lists the focus to as a mm -hmm. link that you can go to. Yeah, and then it has the access to under it, which is what you need. Um, yeah. and, you and then our offices okay. are right here. You just go down the hallway a little bit more, we're right there. Um, and you can always just stop in and see us too, mm -hmm. and we can help you through any of the things that we talked about today.